report released this week suggests his vision for the royal family might be misguided and put its well-known public presence at risk. For more, we're joined now by Frank Young. He's the editorial director of Civitas, a UK-based think tank, and we've reached him today in Surrey, England. Frank, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. So this is something that we heard from King Charles, you know, since, since he has, has come uh, into his new role. But there have been reports for years about this, that he had this vision for a slimmed down monarchy during his reign. But you suggest in this new report that he actually needs the opposite of this. So can you talk about that, about the issues that have arisen for the royal family in terms of its current commitments, both domestically and then overseas as well, of course, well known for all of their various uh, overseas tours? That's right. Well, we've analysed royal engagements um, in the UK and abroad for over a 30-year period. And what we've discovered is that those royal visits and meetings where uh, the royal family get out and about are at their lowest level for uh, 30 years, and they're 40% down in a decade. The royal family itself is uh, smaller than it's ever been. Ten years ago, there were 15 royals getting out and about, shaking hands and cutting ribbons. That figure is now down to about 11, and it's set to fall probably to about eight or nine in 10 years' time. So the royal family is already slimmed down. And something that we heard from Queen Elizabeth II while she was still alive was that she believed that the royal family needed to be seen to be believed. So what sort of risk do you think this could pose for the royal family going forward if, if there are not enough working royals to carry out these various duties so that they can be seen by the public? Well, it's an existential risk. It's a risk to the, the future of the royal family and its popularity, both in the UK and uh, abroad. It was actually uh, George V and, and Mary Tech, his wife, who set the template for modern royalty uh, over 100 years ago. And they uh, came to the conclusion after taking a lot of advice that royals really needed to get out of their palaces and they needed to get into the country and visit towns and villages and meet the people. Uh, and that's a template that has survived for over 100 years. The challenge that King Charles faces is there are now going to be too few royals uh, to get about over the next 10 years of his life. The average age of a working royal is now nudging 70, and a fifth of royal duties are undertaken by royals over the age of 85, where most people are putting their feet up. Frank, I also want to ask you about something else that came out this week. Uh, reports, media reports came out suggesting that Meghan Markle possibly wrote a letter to King Charles over some of these concerns that both she and Prince Harry have expressed of, of unconscious bias uh, within the royal family. What do you make of that? How much, how much hurt uh, has been done to the royal family's image over, over some of the accusations and, and their failure or inability to maybe properly address them? I don't actually think it's done much damage to the royal family and in particular uh, the new king at all. It has done enormous damage to uh, the Harry and Meghan brand, certainly in uh, the UK. I think people are sick and tired of this uh, Harry and Meghan uh, melodrama that continues right up until the point where uh, the king is being uh, being uh, made king at his coronation. Um, the British public certainly are fed up with this. And frankly, um, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, they just need to follow the example of King Charles, put their head down and get on with some good charity work. Something else that your report acknowledges is that, the, is that there does seem to be a growing number of people who think it might be better to see the monarchy abolished. Uh, one former Commonwealth country, of course, Barbados, became a republic just in 2021. How much trouble is the royal family in in, in terms of its existence? Well, it will be in trouble if it doesn't get out and about. That's something that our report um, makes very clear. In terms of its wider international, its global role, particularly within the Commonwealth, the monarchy has had a long-standing uh, position that it really is down to individual countries to make that decision for themselves as to whether uh, now King Charles, as was the Queen Elizabeth II, uh, remains head of state. What is really important is whatever decision that an individual country makes, you know, the United Kingdom, particularly in a post-Brexit environment, remains on great terms with countries like Canada um, and the rest of the Commonwealth. The Commonwealth in many ways is Queen Elizabeth II's greatest legacy and we need to make sure that the relationships that the UK has through the monarchy uh, remain strong 
and strong going into the future. So, Frank, just finally here, as, as the world continues to evolve, as times continue to change, do you still think that there is a place for the royal family going into the future? Absolutely. And um, when we look at the polling, uh, the British people certainly seem to uh, agree with me. What the British people want is they want uh, royals spending less time on the red carpet, less time with celebrities, and they want the royals spending more time on their local high street, opening a new hospital, opening a new community centre, you know, meeting uh, people um, across the country and indeed across the world who are doing amazing things day in and day out, but don't quite get the recognition they deserve. And a visit and a handshake from a member of the royal family is a way of giving those people the recognition that is rightly theirs. OK, we'll see if that continues, especially in the weeks ahead of the coronation. Frank, thank you for this. We really do appreciate your time and your insight today.